opening ceremony slide, uh, you could run a, a short video uh, about the competition. Mm -hmm. But I've seen yeah. other software other than uh, Zoom where, um, uh, I mean, an actual conference would look like a conference where you can enter rooms and exit uh, uh, a hallway and go to the coffee shop and all these nice uh, virtual uh, meeting places. So, Yes, uh, many of them gained traction uh, recently through. Is that true? Really? Which one? <laughs> Hop in. Hopin, oh, oh, the Hopin. Yeah. Hopin yeah. is it's a great uh, platform. The most valuable in, in terms of uh, money, it's valued at uh, $5 billion it's after true. the last year. Yani, so there's future in this. And it's a free market, sorry, it's all online. Exactly. Um, Edgar is saying, uh, yes, Edgar, we will go through it. Uh, we'll talk about all the details, how to participate and what are the challenge tracks. And uh, Walid is saying, uh, yes, uh, inshallah, we will do. And yani, that one of our aims of uh, the Lebanon IoT and AI challenge. Uh, to feel for the next time, inshallah, we will put <laughs> some music. I raised the issue. No, but I Yes. Okay, Mr. Roberto is here. I am Dr. Roni. Okay, I think we can uh, start. Yes, I guess all the panelists are here. Uh, welcome, Mr. Roberto. Hello, hello everyone. Hi, Sarah, how are you doing? Hello, I'm fine, alhamdulillah. I hope you are fine. Uh, totally fine, thank you so much. Thank you again for inviting me. Thanks for you for joining us and welcome again. Thank you. Um, Okay, so I would like to welcome you again to the opening ceremony of the Lebanon IoT and AI Challenge. Um, we are very excited to have you on board. And at first, we would like to uh, introduce the challenge for you. Um, the Lebanon IoT and AI Challenge is a capacity and the pre-incubation program. It's dedicated for senior university students and startups that have innovative ideas in the areas of Internet of Things and artificial intelligence and definitely the related fields. Um, actually, the Lebanon IoT and AI Challenge is part of a very big <laughs> initiative, which is the Arab IoT and AI Challenge. Arab IoT and AI Challenge is a capacity building and a pre-incubation program for high school students, for senior university students, and for startups that have innovation ideas in the areas of IoT and AI. Um, uh, the special about the Arab IoT and AI Challenge is that um, it's not just a competition. It's a digital transformation movement. So far, it has uh, eight participating countries with a total of 354 teams plus 1K participants and 118 innovative ideas. So after all of the success of the challenge in the Arab region, we decided this year to take it to another level and to launch the Lebanon IoT and AI challenge. Our vision that drives us is that the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence are now the next evolution that will dramatically change the existing industries. And all the corporates, all the governments, the tech providers will put and have to put significant efforts into developing solutions for their customers, which will by result allow them to get developed and improve their skills and capabilities. So for that, we are working on stimulating and helping building the ecosystem supporting Lebanese innovation-based economy through facilitating and promoting innovation, entrepreneurship, and through the creation of intellectual property in the fields of IoT, AI, and their applications. Um, we have two challenge tracks for this year, the graduation projects 
a grad project that will uh, participate in our challenge will go into a capacity building program for a whole academic year. Um, this is dedicated for Syrian university students or related schools who are willing to make their grad projects in the fields of IoT or AI. Um, we also have a track for startups. We have a pre-incubation program for startups that are already working or willing to work on IoT and AI. Um, I always say that uh, the most exciting part about our challenge is our partners. Our partners are mainly the IEEE Lebanon section with the uh, uh, chapters Women in Engineering, IEEE Computer Society, and the Young Professionals, which we'll go through them in a few. Um, we are also excited to have Zaka with us, Beirut AI, Beirut Digital Districts, and Microsoft for startups. Um, I guess, and I believe you are making this whole challenge uh, a very distinguished one and taking it to another level. Um, I will give the speech now to Mr. Muhammad Abboud. Mr. Muhammad is the chair of IoT and AI Challenge. He's the managing director of global innovation and entrepreneurship company, focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship. Mr. Muhammad also is the co-founder and executive manager of the MENA Robotics, co-founder and vice president for business development of Ideaspace. Um, he was the co-founder and manager of Start with Google, Better Program, Made in the Arab World, and many, many other initiatives since 2002. We don't have time to list all of the initiatives that engineer Muhammad has been working on. Um, he's also the co-founder of many um, initiatives in Egypt and all over the MENA region. Um, he's the recipient of many international awards, including the IEEE Regional Achievement Award for year 2006. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the invitation. And it is a great pleasure to be with you today in launching uh, Lebanon IoT and AI Challenge. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I have many events and activities all over the region, but my start uh, was with the IEEE in 2000 when I started, when I started the uh, IEEE Gold in Egypt and it was a very uh, impressive start uh, where we start many activities such as Egyptian Engineering Day. Uh, since this date, uh, I believe that uh, the working... Since that, I believe the working with the Arab world is very important for each of other and we need to capitalize on our uh, resources. Uh, that's why when we started Egypt IoT in 2016, uh, our vision was to expand it to the Arab region and also uh, Africa. Uh, beside what we are launching today, in the coming five days, we will launch Africa IoT and I Challenge uh, with more than uh, 25 African countries. Uh, so it is a great pleasure to join you in launching Lebanon. And I hope a great success for uh, this great initiative in Lebanon, and we will provide all needed support from our side. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Muhammad. Uh, thank thank you, you for your presence and for accepting the invitation and for all the support. And we are really excited to have you with us on board. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, if someone has a question for Engineer Muhammad, please uh, feel free to ask. Uh, if not, we will move uh, to our next speakers from the IEEE community in a few. Okay, so I guess we can welcome again our IEEE community. Um, Dr. Bashar al Hassan, Associate Professor at Lebanese University, Faculty of Engineering. He's the chair of the IEEE Lebanon section. Dr. Sara Abu Shakra, Associate Professor at the Lebanese University, Faculty of Technology, and the chair of IEEE Women in Engineering Lebanon. Dr. Roni Darazi, Vice Rector for Cooperation and Internationalization at Université Antonine, chair of the Computer Society uh, Lebanon section. And Ms. Lin Sidawi, the founder of Wingu, chair of the IEEE Young Professionals Lebanon section. I will give the speech at first to Dr. Bashar Al-Hassan, and then Dr. Sarah, Dr. Roni, and Ms. Lee. 
again will give us a brief about each chapter. Dr. Bashar, please. Uh, hello, I hope you are doing very well. Uh, dear colleagues, dear students, dear IEEE liberal section members, dear AI Arabic uh, community, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased and honored to be in front of you uh, at this online event. Uh, this is maybe one of the positive results of the COVID-19. It pushed us to organize online events. And one, uh, it is online, all geographic boundaries fall down and it's easier to attend. Uh, for sure, we will uh, lose uh, the personal contact, but uh, it allow us to attend even if we are not in the same place. Uh, I, will introduce, I will introduce a little bit IEEE. IEEE is the largest uh, technical professional organization for advancements of technology. It has more than 4,000 active members in more than 150, uh, 150 countries. IEEE divides the world in 10 regions. We are in Lebanon in region eight that covered uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, IEEE has more than 40 chapter and societies covering all the major in electrical engineering from nano currents to very high power. Uh, IEEE Lebanon section was founded in 2006 and it continued to grow till 2019, where we were more than 1,700 sorry 1,700 members. Uh, we have in Lebanon six chapters: communication society, computer society, uh, biomedical society, uh, robotics and instrumentation, uh, power and circuits, uh, antenna propagation, and we have three affinity groups: women in engineering, young professional, and life member affinity group. Uh, I, uh, we have 19 student branch in all engineering uh, faculties in Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon section and its affinity groups and chapters and student branches are very active. Each year we win many awards from IEEE and Region 8. IEEE Region 8. Uh, during 2020, we won the Outstanding Medium Section in Region 8 award. Also, uh, two student branches were selected among the best uh, student branches in Region 8 that contain more than 600 student branches. Uh, unfortunately, during 2020, uh, because of the catastrophic, catastrophic situation in Lebanon, uh, not only because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also uh, the economic problem, uh, this affected the, the IEEE membership renewal. Uh, we passed from a large section with more than 1,500 members to a medium section with five between 500 and 1,500 members. Uh, I think we absorbed the shock and we learned a, a lot how to deal with the actual situation and we promised our members and all the technical community to become very active again. Concerning the today event, it's very well known that AI and IoT are the biggest revolution of the 21 century. When uh, AI uh, uh, Arab uh, co competition at, uh, contacted us for a uh, few months ago to be part partner of this event, we accepted directly, uh, directly because of the importance of this topic. Uh, I would like to thank all the organizers for giving me the chance to give this speech. Thank you all for attending this event, and I hope we will uh, it will be very successful, fruitful, useful, and pleasant for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Bashar, and thank you for accepting the invitation and for your partnership. Um, we are very happy to have you on board. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Dr. Sara, uh, yes. May I share my slides? Sure. Okay. No. Okay. 
good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for attending. And we are very pleased to uh, launch AI and IoT challenge in Lebanon. I will briefly uh, present uh, IEEE Women in Engineering Lebanon Affinity Group. Uh, Women in Engineering or WIE is one of the largest international professional organizations dedicated to promoting women engineers and scientists and inspiring girls around the world to follow their academic interests in a career in engineering. IEEE WIE strives to advocate women in leadership roles and career advancement for women, recognize the outstanding achievements of women in electronics and com communication and computer engineering, organize workshops to enhance networking, and facilitate programs and activities that promote women in STEM programs. And AI and IoT uh, challenge is a typical activity where WIE uh, can be very active and very supportive. WIE Executive Committee uh, Lebanon Affinity Group for the term 2021-2022 uh, is a great team. Uh, so I'm uh, Associate Professor at the Lebanese University and I'm the Chair of uh, WIE Executive Committee. Dr. Nadine Abbas from uh, LAU is the Vice Chair. Dr. Sirin Talib from Phoenicia University is the Secretary. Ms. Marwa Lewan, engineer at Layer, is uh, the treasurer. Ms. Rawan Ael, uh, at the American, uh, from the American University of Beirut, is our students' activity coordinator. Dr. Dima Faris from the Lebanese University is the industry relations coordinator. And engineer Nadine Ajam, uh, founder of Building Knowledge, is, was the, is the past chair. Uh, within uh, the Arab IoT and AI Challenge Lebanon, WIE is pleased to announce a specific competition for teams including ladies, and we are pleased to uh, offer uh, mentorship with our she experts. Finally, I would like to thank you again, and uh, you can uh, finally I invite uh, everyone to become a uh, WIE member. Typically that uh, WIE membership is free for students and you can follow uh, WIE Lebanon on, on uh, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. You uh, can also uh, join us on LinkedIn and contact us by uh, on our email address. And I would like you, uh, I would like to thank you or thank you, thanks the organizer for uh, launching uh, the challenge in, in Lebanon and uh, all the attendees for uh, attending and I wish all, everyone a very fruitful uh, challenge. Thank you again. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sara, Dr. Sara. It, uh, thank you for the introduction about the Women in Engineering uh, Lebanon section. Uh, now we will go to uh, Dr. Roni Darazi. Good evening, Dr. Roni. Good evening, everybody. Dear colleagues, dear students, respectful guests, ladies and gentlemen. So IEEE core purpose is to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. It is true that Lebanon is passing, is passing through a multi-layer crisis that we all are experiencing actually. So investing in technology can boost growth and reduce the impact of the financial crisis. Counting on our uh, human capital is major to develop innovative solutions to sustainable development and economic growth. IEEE, which is the world's largest technical professional association for the adv advancement of technology, is being part of uh, this large community and being part of this large community can contribute to build your knowledge by accessing information on the latest technology, trends, industry news, and events. So counting on IEEE membership and its technical chapters, including Computer Society, allows you also to build your network and establish connections and collaborations with colleagues, member groups, and build a support group for your profession, industry, or projects. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered virtually today in the framework of the Lebanon IoT and AI Challenge. This initiative 
that aims to foster technology in a national and a regional context will bring for participants a lot of technical and non-technical competencies throughout the training and interaction with peers, academics, and professionals. So besides promoting innovation and entrepreneurship in the field of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and their applications, we are looking forward to foster social entrepreneurship, to develop, fund, and implement solutions to social, cultural, or environmental issues. We really need that. IEEE Computer Society Lebanon chapter is very pleased to support this event and would like to thank every single person who contributed to the organization of this event. This event that we wish and expect to succeed in order to become a regular tradition for the upcoming years. So, and hopefully to be organized face to face in the next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Roni, and thank you for highlighting the social entrepreneurship part. And uh, as you were saying, it's a must need nowadays in Lebanon in all the situations that you are being through. So thank you again. And thank you for sharing this with us. Um, I leave the floor now to uh, Ms. Lin. Ms. Lin, please uh, uh, yes. start your speech. Hello everyone. So I'm Nancy Bowie. I'm going to talk on behalf of uh, the team of uh, the young professionals uh, of Lebanon. So uh, the purpose or the main target of uh, our team is to uh, support uh, young uh, professionals, uh, fresh grads and uh, students and uh, break the ice between them and the industry. So we try as much as we can to, uh, to uh, like uh, help them uh, be in touch with companies, with the industry uh, and so on. So during the five uh, past years, we tried uh, to uh, do MOUs uh, with the big companies in Lebanon, uh, which uh, helped us send uh, fresh grads uh, to do internships in companies. Uh, we were able also to uh, organize site uh, visits uh, to the fields. Uh, we organized uh, competitions uh, closely with, the, with these companies, uh, like our uh, IoT competition that uh, took place in, uh, I think, 2017 and 18. We made two versions of the IoT competition. And aside, of, uh, aside from technology, technicalities, we initiated our main and the biggest uh, uh, conference for soft skills uh, back in 2017. Uh, it's an annual uh, conference uh, where we bring the speakers uh, to tackle topics uh, uh, such as body language, emotional intelligence, negotiation skills, and stuff like this, to help uh, our fragile graduates uh, adopt like uh, um, adopt uh, skills that will help them start uh, their career in a healthier and a more successful way. So this is our target. Uh, we are very pleased to be part of this competition that is coming. And uh, we are also pleased to support as many as uh, as many uh, students, young, young uh, fresh grads and uh, the startups as we can. Thank you so much, Ms. Lean, and uh, thank you for all the initiatives that have been done. Uh, we are looking forward to this collaboration and to consolidating all the efforts in order to bring something for Lebanon and to create this ecosystem for uh, AI and IoT. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, now uh, we have Mr. Roberto Crossai. Uh, Mr. Roberto, we are very excited uh, about having you with us. Um, Mr. Roberto is the managing director for Microsoft for Startups, uh, Middle East and Africa. He has over 20 years of experience working for the likes of Microsoft and Google. He has bridged the gap between corporates and startups across more than 20 countries, including the MENA region, helping them develop real solutions that solve real world problems. Uh, Mr. Roberto is a leading innovator in developing ecosystems where startups thrive. Uh, 
in his current role as the managing director of Microsoft for Startups, uh, he is building Microsoft's new division from scratch, including spearheading its expansion and innovation strategy with the vision to foster a collaborative startup ecosystem to create a better, brighter future for people around the world. Uh, Mr. Robert is also passionate about mentoring young people and helping them develop an entrepreneurial mindset to search for solutions to problems they see in their community, country, or across the globe. And he is an international speaker at uh, prominent universities such as Abu Dhabi and Zayed University. And he always speaks about authentic and creative leadership, employee engagement, mental health, innovation, and digital transformation, and funding and startups. Uh, Mr. Roberto, again, we are so happy to have you with us, and uh, the floor is Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. First of all, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, I mean, it's great to see this uh, challenge happening uh, in the region and from Lebanon, um, uh, despite, uh, you know, the, all the, the troubles and challenges you're, you're going through in, in, in Lebanon. But also, uh, usually, you know, you hear a feedback in the region that uh, uh, we still need to catch up, uh, you know, to more mature ecosystems. Um, and, and it's great to see these initiatives around the region, right? So we need to, we need to bring technology uh, to life uh, in, in the right way. We need to have young people uh, use, we need to have uh, more people um, understanding where technology can play a role uh, in, in developing new solution and bringing innovation uh, in having an impact on the life of millions of people. Um, if you think about it, we are entering the third wave of, uh, of computing. And it's not only about uh, uh, you know, uh, IT per se, if you think about construction and factory floors, if you think about uh, operating rooms and classrooms, um, think about mixed reality, AI, IoT, as we are talking here today, we, we call it the intelligent edge, intelligent cloud. Um, you know, all of these things are not just changing the way we work, they're also changing the way we learn, the way we communicate, and the way we get things done. So uh, we are really at the dawn of a new age of computing. Uh, we believe that this is an age uh, in which the digital world goes beyond uh, 2D screens and enters a sort of a three-dimensional three world, uh, empowering more people to achieve more in ways we could only have imagined until now. So, um, you know, what's, what's really interesting is uh, these new technologies and the, the, the way, for example, a company like Microsoft is looking at the human interaction, so the human aspect of, of technology, how to humanize technology, but also how to build for everyone, right? If you think about uh, accessibility, um, people of determination, and, and, and uh, you know, we could all be there. And it's very important, uh, you know, to understand technology and to build technology that is for everyone. Um, also on the ethical side of things, as we are talking about AI today, uh, you know, you wouldn't want, uh, uh, you know, an algorithm that is going to be being built on AI that is going to take decisions that are not representative or that they've not factored in a diversity, diversity of uh, not just diversity of gender and geographies, diversity of experiences, of backgrounds, of mindsets. And all of this is extremely important to understand the responsibility that comes uh, with uh, understanding uh, uh, where technology play a big role. Decision makers understand the importance of emerging technologies, um, but there are still organizational constraints uh, that hold them back from adopting more. So when we talk about technology, we, we always have to remember that it's, it's mainly not about technology, it's also about, uh, it's mainly about people, right? So it's mainly about us as human beings coming together and focusing on solving real problems. And this is what, uh, this is my wish. My wish is, you know, I'm attending a lot of pitches, pitch sessions, and sometimes, or most of the times you see, uh, and a number of founders that use AI more as, a, as an accessory, as a, by the way, my solution is empowered by AI. And most of the times you see, look, this is not really AI. This is any else in the code and you could make it, right? So, uh, so we really want to empower and skill people on what this technology is about, how you can leverage these technologies to solve real problems, how you can scale and build secure and reliable solutions leveraging this technology. Uh, the trend, uh, the trend. I'm very positive about the trend in the region. Uh, I, I, I don't think, as you hear saying, that this region lacks talent. I think talent is here. It's a matter of connecting this talent to opportunities, empowering this talent, believing in the talent, skilling the talent that we have in the region. is a very diverse region, and there is there is a lot of talent here that deserve uh, opportunity, access to 
uh, these opportunities to to thrive and and to 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 fail as well the, the opportunity to fail fast and build again which sometimes in some part of this region is not is not easy to do so my wish is to to see uh, you guys taking on uh, you know this challenge with a great spirit so to really embrace these technologies for what they can really serve but focusing on real problems and and uh, you know uh, uh, remembering that it's also uh, you know about people so not losing that human connection that technology uh, can have and and we can play all a role to to make it happen um, as microsoft for startups we are we are uh, we are here to support founders and startups in the region we are about to launch in a couple of weeks uh, a very cool program to engage with the ecosystem we will have a competition soon to select startups into a, a, a sort of an accelerator which we will call growth x to work with startups and, and corporates around the open innovation and next fiscal year we aim to launch a program for youth uh, around uh, 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 entrepreneurship as a mindset and helping youth to uh, launch their ideas, turn them into products and MVPs, and and you know build the funnel uh, for that. So give our contribution there. With that, I'm very excited about the session. Thanks again for inviting me. Um, if you if you have any questions or if you want to reach out, uh, uh, feel free to connect over LinkedIn or uh, any other channel. And happy to be in touch and uh, uh, you know uh, be a witness of the progress of your of your ideas, your solutions, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, making an impact uh, uh, in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Roberto. Thank you for accepting the invitation with all the amount of work and the limited time that you have. Um, uh, we are striving to achieve your wish. Um, what you have said that AI is not an accessory, it's about people. And uh, with our panelists now, we will be discussing exactly the same issues that you were mentioning, like the ethics in AI and uh, how to build tech for everyone and the possible applications for AI. Uh, so thank you for this. We are looking forward for this collaboration and we will definitely be sharing the programs that Mr. Roberto mentioned with everyone, uh, especially with our teams that we will be enrolled uh, uh, in our program so that you may can apply uh, later on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, so, uh, next we uh, will go to Mr. Christophe Zorbi. Uh, Mr. Christophe uh, is, the soft, is a software engineer with over 10 years of experience in software development and various fields of data science and artificial intelligence. Um, Mr. Christophe is the founder of Beirut AI, the Applied Artificial Intelligence Community in Lebanon, where he organizes community events and technical workshops to help people understand and apply AI. Uh, he is also the founder and CEO of Zaka, an artificial intelligence consulting company that aims to develop the AI sector in the local community and abroad. Uh, Mr. Christophe will be initiating our panel discussion uh, for today. So, uh, Mr. Christophe, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Very happy to be here. Um, Sarah, can I share my screen? I prepared a small presentation. Sure. Shouldn't take more than five minutes. Thank you for this. Sure. Okay, uh, just a second. Um, okay. So, you should be able to see my screen. Uh, again, thank you for having me here today. I'm very happy to be part of this initiative and this project. Uh, I would like to talk very briefly about the AI education, why it's important, and what is the role that AI is playing in our future. So um, I believe Sarah has already introduced me, so no need for, for this slide. Um, I would like to start the presentation by quickly talking about automation. And so in the example on the slide, this is the first fully automated spinning mill. It's the first example of an automation machine. It was invented in 1771 by Richard Arkwright. And over the last century, we've seen uh, uh, robots replace workers in many tasks. And basically, humans are always looking for new ways to help us do our jobs easier and faster. And this is true in many industries. We can see examples of automation in agriculture, in transportation, in health, etc. Um, every industrial revolution is characterized by a certain technology. From the uh, invention of the electricity in the first, sorry, from the introduction to the steam engine in the first industrial revolution to the invention of the electricity in the second industrial revolution, 
up until the digital revolution with the introduction of computers and the internet. And we are currently living in what we call the fourth industrial revolution, which is uh, it's built on top of the digital revolution and is characterized or fueled by technologies such as big data and artificial intelligence. And the reality today is that AI is taking over large parts of the business processes that were previously done manually. And with every addition to the AI toolbox, companies that don't integrate AI are being left behind in productivity and efficiency. This is true across all industries. You don't have to be working in technology to use artificial intelligence to your benefit. And this means that no industry is immune to automation. So as we see, whenever AI is being applied in, in different sectors, it is revolutionizing all the industries that it enters. And in the future, AI will most likely automate many of the tasks that we see or that we have today. So how is this affecting humans? It's great for businesses, but how Seems that uh, we lost uh, Mr. Christoph. Sarah, we lost Christoph. Christoph yes. for some reason. Yes. Back again. I, I'm sorry. It's one of the reminders of living in Lebanon. We always have electricity cuts or internet <laughs> just suddenly goes goes out. Goes out. So. Um, no did you lose me here or did you lose me at that slide? Um, yes, waiting for the screen to be shared. Okay. Yes, okay. here, you were talking yes. about. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm sorry for the internet cutoff. So I was saying that uh, we are currently living in the fourth industrial revolution. And today we know that AI is taking over large part of business processes that were previously done manually. And with every addition to the AI toolbox, uh, companies that don't integrate AI in their businesses are being left behind. So we can see uh, AI affecting all industries. You don't have to be working in technology to be using artificial intelligence to your benefit. So this means that no industry is immune to automation. So as AI is being applied in many sectors, it is revolutionizing all the industries that it enters. And in the future, AI will most likely automate many of the tasks that we see today. So how is this affecting the humans? Because we know it's great for businesses, but what does this leave for the humans? From the first industrial revolution on, machines have always prompted fears in humans. We have always been afraid that our jobs will be taken away from us and that the AI revolution is no different. So we currently know from many studies that a lot of jobs have been automated due to AI or to technologies fueled by artificial intelligence. But we also know that a lot of new jobs are being created with even higher wages. So if there are more jobs being created than jobs being eliminated, then this should be a good thing, right? Well, it's not actually that simple because, uh, because basically automation was once thought to be only contained to low skilled or routine tasks. But now with advances in technologies, we are resulting in the automation of more highly skilled and cognitive tasks, which means that these new jobs that are being created require more advanced skills. And so the challenge now is to train and educate workers so that they can develop these skills and successfully move into future jobs. So what are the essential skills that the, the, for the 21st century that will allow people to succeed in their career? It depends on basically on who you ask. But one thing that all experts agree on is that employees must, must stay in learning mode so that their skills remain uh, relevant. So many people agree that some of the uh, crucial skills that are required for the 21st century are critical thinking and problem solving, digital literacy, creativity and thinking outside the box, collaboration and teamwork. So what we do here at Beirut AI is we are the applied AI community in Lebanon. And our goal is to enable everyone to understand and to apply artificial intelligence. We started organizing meetups and then based on the community's feedback, we started adjusting and creating different types of events to cater for our members' needs. So as we know, we organize quarterly meetups where we bring local practitioners to share their experience in applying AI. We also have technical workshops, business workshops, hackathons, and we have a strong university ambassador program that targets students in different universities. Beirut AI is also part of a global community called City AI, 
that has more than 60 hubs uh, in different countries around the world. And we are proud to be the most active city in the city AI community. One very important project that I really love at Beirut AI is our AI bootcamp that we host twice a year. It aims to introduce different topics of AI in one week. It's really a zero to hero experience. We host this bootcamp, as I said, twice a year in January and in August. And so far we've graduated over 200 AI heroes. This shows directly our mission of educating and building a strong pool of talent capable of working in the AI field and follow the global trend of future jobs. I'd like to end this small presentation with a quote by Stephen Hawking that says AI is likely the best or the worst thing to happen to humanity. I'd like to bet on the positive side and say that AI will be the best thing to happen to us. And I invite you to share a vision for a future where Lebanon plays a key role in AI. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chris, for this presentation. Um, it was really impressive. And uh, the last thing that you ended with, the quote that you ended with, I guess it goes uh, right away into our panel discussion. Uh, so thank you for uh, initializing this. Um, we will move now to our panel discussion based on what has been said and discussed. Um, in our panel discussion, we will have Mr. Rudy Shushani, Mr. Yona Walker, and Dr. Walid Karam. I would like just to give a brief intro about uh, each of our uh, panelists. Uh, Mr. has over 20 years of formation. He's a specialist in ICT corporate and compliance, GRC security. He's a Stanford University grad in cybersecurity. He's a grad in computer science, awarded at a, by PwC, certified, pro, he is certified professor. He's the host and director of the DX Talk series, a digital transformation talk show, um, an active speaker in a numerous events in the MENA region and the Union of Arab Banks. Uh, he's a member also of the executive board, uh, coordinator of strategy committee in digital transformation network. All information system audit and control uh, on chapter he's a senior ict advisor for lebanese it syndicate a coach and mentor for different ngos startups and hackathon and he was recently selected as top 50 global thought leader and influencer in technology field and trainer in emerging technology fintech and digital transformation so welcome mr rudy we are so happy and excited to have you on board uh, thank you thank you sarah likewise Thank you so much. Sarah, I just want to indicate that the connection is a little bit uh, cutting. Oh, okay. Yes. So we are switching between 3G and uh, I guess, is it better now? I yes, hope everyone it's is. better now, Sarah. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Okay, I'll go back to uh, Mr. Yona. So Mr. Yona has been working of tech and society since 2005. Um, he became a tech explorer and launched a hardware think tank. Over his journey, he founded and co-created tech startups and labs, helped to facilitate tech ecosystem through North America, uh, to MENA, Africa, Europe, and screened over 2,000 teams, contributed projects in ethics, AI and tech, deep tech and sustainability. His current work is focused on human-centered tech, research and policies behind it, the emerging products and ventures which shape the future of learning, work, well-being, ability, and access. So welcome, uh, Mr. Yona. Uh, Thank you so, so happy much. To have you. Thank you. Our moderator will be Dr. Walid Karam. Uh, Dr. Walid is a computing and telecom engineer. He's a professor and researcher at the University of Balaman since 1993. He's a former ICT advisor to the Lebanese Minister of Telecommunication, a founding member of the Lebanese Internet Center, a founding member of the Lebanese Education and Research Network. He's an Internet Society member, Lebanon chapter. He's a senior IEEE senior member Secretary of the IEEE Lebanon section and a past chair for the IEEE Computer Society Lebanon chapter. He's a Georgia Tech grad and a telecom Paris Tech grad. Uh, welcome, Dr. Walid, and uh, thank you for moderating this session. 
Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for having us uh, today. Um, and pleased to meet Rudy and uh, Yona uh, virtually. Uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, when Sarah contacted me some time ago uh, about uh, partnering uh, uh, with this initiative, um, she, I think she contacted me over uh, LinkedIn. I did not hesitate. Normally, sometimes I overlook those messages and I, it takes me a long time to reply, but, but then I saw the initiative and I said, uh, why not? I mean, I've been working in academia uh, in direct contact with young minds, with uh, students, entrepreneurs uh, for over uh, 25 years now. And uh, it's amazing what ideas come out of uh, those minds. So I said, I would like to uh, venture in this again, uh, work closely uh, uh, to the success of this initiative. And I know that there are great ideas out there from students, from uh, fresh graduates, from young professionals, from, uh, from women specifically. Um, those ideas never see the light because they never get the opportunity. So I think this platform will help us uh, uh, shed the light on those initiatives, hoping that uh, 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 out of Lebanon will have very successful ideas that will probably compete at the Arab level and uh, uh, hoping that they will also win the competition. Uh, so um, um, Rudy, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, um, I see your profile and uh, I am very much impressed with your uh, background. Uh, and uh, I also, uh, uh, um, I guess I am on the mailing list of your uh, DX talks and uh, I, 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 I see your activities every once in a while. I don't get the opportunity to uh, see the webinar, but I'm hoping that uh, I will uh, eventually. Uh, now, my first question to you, uh, uh, Rudy, uh, tell us more about um, the role of AI and IoT in the digital transformation, the way you see it. You're muted. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walid, uh, for uh, the introduction. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for uh, Lebanon AI IoT initiative. And really, first, this is an amazing platform. And hopefully the, this platform will grow. And uh, the way I see it, it's actually growing more and more. Um, now let's go back to your uh, question in terms of the digital transformation and what's happening on that front. We know today that uh, in the last 120 years, plus and minus, uh, everything was really about, uh, or economies was about the oil. Uh, jump more to today, the economies today is about data. So things has really shifted. It's no longer about uh, technicalities of oil. It's changing. If we look at 15 years ago, the top 10 companies by market capitalization, they were GE, Shell, sorry, uh, Shell, uh, and other uh, you know uh, oil related companies. Now all you see is Microsoft, Google and other companies that are leading this digital uh, front. So again, we are talking about the data. So with data, everything is possible today. How do we really get data? And this is the topic uh, that we are discussing today. Uh, first part is IoT, all right? Now we've seen a big drive in the IoT business there will be around 80 billion devices connected by 2025, which is you know, a couple of years down the road. So imagine uh, the 80, 85, uh, and the 2025 explosion of IoT. So what does it really mean to have an IoT or what is an IoT? Anything that today is, was a dumb device that is now connected to the internet and has most importantly logs and data where he can capture these uh, you know, events or uh, sensors or so on. So they are really generating on daily basis more and more clever data. And then automation comes in. And then of course we have the AI part, which is really making sense of all of this uh, information that today we are really, uh, you know, uh, data has exploded. In the last 
uh, hundred years, uh, the data has been, you know, as part of the humanity. Now, every two years, actually, we recreate humanity's data on a two year cycle. So just imagine the boom of data. So all of this is uh, really changing. So in terms of digital transformation, what do we look on uh, digital transformation? Efficiency, innovation, value, and many other criteria. But let's focus on this. What is IoT given us in terms of efficiency or in terms of innovation? Is it given us value? This is today how it is being powered, how things are shifting, how people are shifting towards an IoT environment and coupled with AI. So we can really try to uh, you know, enhance our uh, daily routines, enhance our manufacturing process, enhance our uh, anything today is touched by automation or touched by digital transformation from your uh, smallest, uh, you know, uh, interaction with uh, any account or any banking or any, uh, you know, anything today is fully autonomous, coming to an autonomous part, not fully autonomous yet, but coming more and more automation. So that data availability today, which is our new oil, uh, and I think Robert Roberto, if he's here, he understands more on the new oil that we are really living because they are leading on that front with Microsoft. Uh, it's really enhancing that digital transformation across everybody, every association, even our lives. Uh, so this is the beauty of that IoT and uh, you know AI technology in that terms of digital transformation. It's taking us to new means, it's giving us efficiency, it's really innovative parts, and it's been applied, implied or applied into everything we know. Even, you know, if we go to uh, uh, not just manufacturing, uh, agriculture, IT is there. Uh, we go into the actual manufacturing, IT is there. We go into, uh, you know, uh, wind, whatever. So IoT is really enhancing that future and that future growth that we must really start grabbing that future, grabbing that data, grabbing this opportunities that it is opening to us to transform the way economies even and cities, smart cities, it's there. So the future of the world is actually in the smart cities. So it's, it's all over, it's touching every point uh, it's touching our life and it's, you know, giving uh, uh, us a new uh, possibility to really take back control of the things that has happened in the last 100 years in our life uh, related to Earth, because Earth is really suffering. So hopefully with this new technologies between AI and IoT can really try to make more sense, try to have more efficiency on all over the things that we are uh, really doing. Okay, well, uh, interesting. Thank you, uh, Rudy. I'll be back with you in a moment, but now I'm going to uh, uh, address uh, Yona. Uh, Yona, you've, um, uh, I can see that you've helped uh, facilitate tech ecosystems in North America, uh, in APAC, in MENA, in Africa, in Europe. So you've been around uh, all different places. What's so special about our area, the MENA region, and, 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 and the question here more specifically, why aren't we seeing uh, uh, big success stories from our region? I mean, we have all the grounds, we have the talent, uh, we have the cap capabilities, financial, um, um, we have the technologies, uh, the universities, uh, and, and the ecosystem in certain countries. I mean, you don't, you don't want to include Lebanon for the time being, we're going through very tough times, but uh, I mean, especially in the Gulf region, but we're not seeing a lot of success stories like big companies. I mean, we, make, we made a big fuss about one company uh, uh, um, be listed in NASDAQ. Uh, and, and this is great news, but I mean, that's one company. So that's my, I mean, I mean you, you, can, you can better compare than us. Can you tell us more about the reasons? Yes. Uh, first of all, um, I would love to underline that I definitely uh, work across all of these regions and my goal is to connect all of the dots between research, technology, uh, capital specifically in technologies and ventures uh, related to the future of learning, health 
and specifically disability and assistive technology. And basically things that you just uh, mentioned, it's not only related to particular regions, actually they related to particular niches. For instance, if we uh, go to MIT and trying to explore how uh, companies focus on disability or a neurological disorders perform in terms of uh, venture rounds, you will be uh, very disappointed because in most cases, we are not able to track funding, even though we're driven by the best uh, alumni of uh, MIT or Harvard, just because there is a monopoly and uh, of particular minds and particular vision of venture capital in particular niches we like to invest. So basically in my work um, in disability or assistive technology or neurodiversity field, I'm actually uh, forced to connect the dot between different regions because, for instance, places like Asia or Middle East are places where we found one of the best talent in data science uh, and uh, in uh, science scientific fields. Uh, we pick funding in UK or US, but all of these markets are disconnected. And unfortunately, all of the people who actually invest in this field, they're kind of a uh, venture uh, activists. So they're not a part of uh, the main agenda. They're not a part of a typical ecosystems or a Silicon Valley. For instance, if we go to the such topic uh, is investment in autism related technology. In most cases, people who invest in this technology are parents of uh, children who are actually have a, who are on, on the spectrum. So uh, typically, uh, though it's a billion uh, dollars or sometimes al almost trillion dollars opportunity, disability, neurological disorders is completely ignored. So uh, basically, unfortunately, we still uh, struggle over the problems of monopolies. I spent many years in technology world and I still remember when I, I was a, a founder of startups, all of, all of um, our board members dream about acquisition for uh, for companies like Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Twitter. So actually today, innovation in Silicon Valley become a part of this acquisition cycle. You create technology not in order to innovate or help people or help pa patients, students, or uh, reshape classrooms, but just to sell your talent or your data to the bigger company. So if we have some emerging market which would love to innovate, for instance, connecting the vertical of universities or uh, technology transfer to this uh, vertical, it doesn't work because there just doesn't fit this mechanism. And that's why, for instance, if we go to the UK, you will see that uh, deep tech technology are driven not by accelerators like Y Combinator or 500 startups, they're driven by universities and funds which actually connected to these universities. So they create their own ecosystem from scratch. University, PhD research people, and uh, venture funds uh, which invest in this technology in healthcare, in particular research, they're not able to get any support from Silicon Valley investors. So they create their own market on the own from the scratch. And unfortunately, what's what uh, we're doing from for disability, for inclusive technology, for assistive technology, for neurodiversity, uh, for women health. I mean, for instance, I drive uh, a co-drive co-expansion of women in AI. And in most cases, we create our own ecosystem of talent, pipeline of talent, of partners. I mean, we have no any support from traditional partners, which typically invest in uh, companies you're able to find in unicorn lease. I mean, it's just another niche, another world. And for instance, I had many talks with successful VCs in Silicon Valley, and they openly say, we don't care about quality of talent. We don't care about quality of, of a company or a product. We care only about one thing, how it's easy to make acquisition and, and sell this company and make profits for, uh, for the previous investors. So we just make money uh, right here and right now. And the only value they actually pursue. So uh, I believe it doesn't make sense trying to fit with world because for, for me, it's dying world. I mean, uh, one of the biggest hub of AI, uh, for instance, in Africa is in Nigeria and Lagos. 10,000 um, of data scientists are driven by Zindi Africa is a hackathon. Uh, there is an open source movement of scientists. I mean, we don't need this world. I mean, it's outdated. It's, uh, at some point, 
uh, taxi drivers become outdated and we see now Uber and we have an Airbnb and other technology, venture capital in the way how it's presented by Silicon Valley is outdated. It has no value for the real world. Snapchat has no any impact for your health, for your family, for your mother, for your children. And there is no any sense trying to fit this world. It makes sense to uh, be focused on your own vision of technology, of innovation, contribution to your community. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, in Israel. We, drew, we created hackathon between Palestine and Israel. And we uh, realized that the only people who are able to help us as we are, I mean, we should help our ourselves uh, with first small steps through pipeline of talent, pipeline of our vision of niches, which we consider crucial. Um, and finally, for our own policies and ethics, uh, currently we see a significant difference between, for instance, Europe and United States in terms of the policies. Uh, recently, I created um, a framework for, uh, for a European Commission, uh, and it will be integrated by companies like Siemens, uh, Bosch. And interesting enough that uh, today, uh, though we have so many talks in the United States uh, re related to ethics, uh, actually the only driver of ethics in AI is mostly either Europe or emerging countries. I mean, monopolists in the United States ignore all of these policies and they do everything is possible in order to avoid these policies. And you able to find many cases when uh, so-called uh, ethics professionals and residents in the United States just fire it as we explore some violations. So I believe it doesn't make sense trying to fit this world. I mean, we see growing markets, we see growing potential of the Middle East, of China, of India, of Eastern Europe. I mean, it makes sense to build a new uh, type of a connections of our visions of uh, AI policies and ethics, uh, build our pipelines of uh, venture capitalists who care about the future, not just uh, for instance, growing of Silicon Valley capital, but growing our communities. And what's what we're trying to create um, in our niche, for instance, of neurodiversity, assistive technology and disability. And I believe um, something similar could work uh, for Middle East as well. Okay, well, thank you. Very insightful. Um, uh, but what, what's strong about acquisition? Let me, let me, let me think about this. I mean, um, acquisition is about good technology, right? Nobody's going to acquire a company if it doesn't have a good solution that will make sense, that will advance the, uh, uh, you know, the state, the current state, and that will help the society, and eventually will make money. So uh, you see not to like this, I mean, incentive of being, um, you know, uh, working for an acquisition. So uh, as an entrepreneur, yes, that's your incentive. So what's wrong with that? Uh, could, could you uh, elaborate on this point? Um, yeah, uh, basically it, it, the thing what you just covered is a kind of ideal world. I th uh, in most cases, Facebook uh, buy companies in order to become monopoly. Uh, because we already uh, made acquisition, the whole vertical of the uh, advertising in order to actually create a bubble of uh, advertisement and build this unicorn. So we try to build all the data companies, all the messaging companies and everything who related to um, transaction in uh, advertisement selling. So their goal, it's not buying good technology. Their goal to monopolize the whole market and uh, create the situation, the bidding and the mechanism of selling of uh, advertisement not aligned with any kind of a competition. And uh, what's why uh, many of companies now go away from Facebook because it's not efficient to promote companies on Facebook. It's too expensive and not efficient and an organic reach is almost dead. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Maybe things which you mentioned work uh, 10 or 15 years ago. I started my way in technology as a technology ex explorer and journalist. And I still remember how I've, I've created uh, a, a white paper about NVIDIA and their acquisition of 3D effects. It was about technology. It, it was about uh, the future of video accelerators. And it was about the new type of, a, uh, let's say, uh, so-called SLI 
uh, mechanism we're able to implement in PC in order to uh, scale uh, video accelerators. But now, no, it's just about um, conquering uh, the market and becoming monopolies, uh, which what they see in terms of Amazon. Uh, we're trying to just uh, uh, removed all of the players who actually uh, been their competitor. For instance, if you uh, uh, Google Ecoje Eco uh, is an ethical um, search engine, you will see that Google banned this uh, uh, app from Google Apps because it's their competitor. They ban them, or if they're not able to restrict them, they buy them. It's not about good technology. It's a very hard fighting. I mean, Today, Silicon Valley, it's not the place of a good relationship. People hate each other, they buy each other in order to destroy technology. I mean, uh, just spend more time. I'm, it's a very miserable place, which why, for instance, many of my colleagues go to the Texas, they go to the Canada, they go to the France, to UK, just because the whole market became so aggressive. It's not about technology or innovation uh, anymore. And what's why, for instance, I'm a patient. I'm used medication from 1960s because there's no progress in mental health since 1960s. Okay, if uh, pharmaceutical companies actually uh, make so smart acquisition, why we have no progress in mental health? It's a simple question. I mean, I made so many research in this field, but unfortunately it doesn't uh, confirm with uh, hypothesis. I only yeah. see examples, maybe good UX, UI. They buy something which able to scale, but it's not about technology in the way how we see it like five, 10 or 15 years ago about actual innovation or impact. Okay, well, thank you, very clear. Um, uh, Rudy, um, tell us more about the status of, uh, of AI in the MENA region, specifically um, um, in Lebanon. I know you know that there are a few initiatives here. Uh, there's more in Dubai and the Gulf region. So um, um, what is the status? I mean, are we, uh, how many companies, not by numbers, but I mean, what is the, uh, the scale of, uh, of, of, the, uh, uh, of the business? You're muted, uh, Rudy. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Walid. Um, yes, uh, well, as you mentioned, you know, we, we do have some success stories, but they are not, you know, big success stories. We're still not on the competition side. Uh, but, you know, we are more of the consumer. Uh, in the, I'm not talking about Lebanon. I'm talking in the region. We're more on the consumer side rather than, you know, on the innovation side. But, you know, certain things are, are changing. I'll go back to the small scenarios. But first, let me give uh, an outlook on the, on the area. Uh, we know that productivity is really over the last 10 years or even the 20 years is actually going down while you know we need it we need something new to bring it up and especially now with uh, covid uh, unfortunately uh, the study says that even productivity is even going further uh, even though we're working maybe double the time but actually you know that disconnection and so on uh, that model uh, full benefits, so there must be a change to the way uh, we do things. This is the, the first thing that we must highlight. Now, if you go back to the Middle East uh, region, uh, we are lagging in terms of implementations of AI and IoT in, in general. We are lagging towards the market. So 10% uh, of the Middle East is on that train versus, you know, the, the nearest, uh, let's say, just Turkey is more on the 20% implementations versus the world is more on the also 20, 25% of the implementations that has started in this. But the futuristic trends and the futuristic studies that in 2030, that we will be actually one of the leading, uh, we're talking Middle East, the leading on in the implementation and impact. So hopefully there will be, uh, you know, big uh, financial uh, part of this uh, business readiness, more companies are, uh, you know, starting to grasp the technology. They were forced by COVID 
prior COVID, you know, companies were slacking on the technology side, on their processes, on their policies, even the governments. We saw many governments have failed. Of course, Lebanon is one of them on a high scale. And there's a question about this in the Q&A, which I will answer by the end of this. Uh, but more or less things are now, you know, starting to kind of normalize to try to uh, uh, take that uh, train and lead it. If we go to GCC market, which is the most advanced uh, in that term of uh, in the area, uh, we see that there's a war, uh, not a physical war, but a hypothetical war between uh, UAE and more specifically uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and uh, KSA, uh, Riyadh and their other uh, cities, who is going to be leading the future of economy. Okay, uh, the vision of 2030 of uh, KSA is uh, there to, you know, position itself, not just in the G20, actually in the G10. So this is a big, you know, advancement of economics. And when we saw the new city that they are proposing, Neom, and the advancements that it will, it will be offering, and it will be based fully on, you know, a lot of robotics, IOTs, uh, AI, and so on, and many things of, of those enhancements. So uh, in, the, in the region, we're going to be seeing uh, 63, uh, around 63% of uh, you know, improvement on those fronts, according to PwC study that was done. So we will be seeing you know, uh, new economies and new sectors that are growing. And most importantly, if we look at the sectors and uh, that the construction and manufacturing will be the most part of uh, you know, uh, affected or uh, adopting and then followed by energy, followed in the public sector, financial institutions, retail, uh, and transport. UAE is, again, uh, the leader on this. They have created a ministry for AI because they understood that the future is actually AI. And this is something that everybody must understand. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, hypothesis that AI ethics and will it be the future? Are people going to be fighting it? Will they, you know, there's a lot of debate on that. There's a debate on the policies. Now we've seen in the, in the EU what's happening towards, you know, governing AI itself. Uh, but uh, according to what we see today, there's a lot of, you know, uh, adoption towards the future and the cities or the governments that are very clever, they start into putting it as a strategy part of the economic growth and GDP. So if we talk about AI and uh, uh, IoT, in, in the region, it's about $320 billion of investment. So this is a very big number. I'll go back to Yona. It's about money. You know, in the end of the day, it is about money. When you acquire certain companies, you know, it's about that balance sheet. Is it doing good or not? Regardless of uh, that, uh, you know, examples or will it, is it helping? We see the UN SDG is leading on that front and they started to integrate uh, startups towards these things, you know, so they can do some certain impact regarding the SDG 2030. Um, uh, Saudi Arabia will have, uh, you know, more or less between it and will be the biggest uh, GDP uh, uh, impact uh, towards AI uh, in, in the region. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, let's localize it in Lebanon, uh, we have, you know, a couple of uh, success stories for AI and IoT. I named Beirut AI is one of them, you know, there's a lot of there's medical applications that are involved in AI, robotics even, and, you know, uh, we see Anagami did uh, also utilize AI in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, applications. And uh, we have a Lebanese company called IO3, which is an agriculture related. So there are solutions, but of course, you know, things are not widespread uh, towards, um, you know, a bigger scale. So. Uh, it's, it's happening. It's taking that time. That's why we need more policies. We need more incentives. We need more funding. Uh, this is where, you know, the VCs, they must come and throw money uh, towards helping uh, the society at first. We're going into a smart city. We love it or not. Uh, some societies will suffer. They will not go. Some other societies, they will be advanced. If you go to Spain, you, and then you, you, know, you, you check that uh, smart cities that they are doing, it's, it's amazing. It's fully run by uh, such technologies. So uh, we need to follow that train. Otherwise, we are you know, <laughs> going out of 
not business, but going out of uh, the textbooks and we're going into the uh, history rather than being, you know, on that forefront of innovation where today it is actually being led by uh, the GCC uh, areas. Uh, on, in terms, let's say, on the government perspectives, you know, uh, also the top three governments in the area on e-governments, because this is part of it, and they have, you know, uh, brought a lot of solutions. Uh, it's Amman, K uh, UAE, and KSA. So again, those three countries are also leading uh, by big differences and big margins towards the rest of the, I would say, the MENA region as a whole. So uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things happening. Now, the, the, the question that was asked by, um, by Walid, which is uh, AI and digital transformation, uh, if we speak about Lebanon, where electricity is an issue, internet speed is an issue, and a bunch of other things, are we ready to shift and transform at a good pace? I think, uh, or we're still behind. I think we have a very golden, uh, you know, uh, chance, in my opinion, uh, to go and adopt the latest technology. Because, as you say, we can, you know, invest in certain types of technologies once, twice, and three times until it is, you know, uh, mature and it is uh, cost uh, not costly anymore. Where uh, uh, democratization of that technology is happening, and I think today we can really benefit of such things. There's a lot of initiatives I worked on uh, with the Parliament, Lebanese Parliament, on uh, digital uh, economy and transformation uh, in the policy sectors. Uh, we have a lot of things that are ready, but we definitely need uh, a government. And uh, so far, we have failed to secure one regard, uh, due to the political uh, situation. But uh, if there is a goodwill, I think we can jump a lot of, you know, uh, jumpstart big time. We will not be leading, of course, but there will be a lot of you know things that will help the citizen because uh, on the on the government or e-government side or digital transformation side towards Lebanon, it's about that citizen. It's about helping that citizen. But unfortunately, today we're still talking about <laughs> internet speeds and no electricity and you know and many other things. We have a golden chance to adopt the latest technology, but hopefully. You know, let's let's pray uh, for the, locally something happens, and then we can talk more about uh, digital transformation. Okay, thank you, thank you, Rudy. Um, um, I have a last question. In fact, it goes to both of you. Um, and most of our attendees today are students, entrepreneurs, young professionals. What is your advice? I mean, they might have the greatest idea. But what is your advice for them? How do they go by, uh, you know, implement their, uh, their solutions? I know this competition that we are working on and the details will come in a moment on how they will participate uh, might help them a little bit. Okay, but what is your, uh, globally, what is your advice? I'll let what you answer tell them? and then I'll answer uh, to the very local. As, as you, as, yeah, sure. Yuna? Uh, okay. Um, wonderful. Um, first of all, um, when I work with startups, one of the biggest reasons that I typically fail uh, is a lack of research. And typically I say to them, if you would love to define the problem and come up with a great concept, product, prototype, technology, uh, you should go not to the internet, not to the uh, searching uh, on digital. You should go to the hospitals, to the schools, uh, to the communities and talk to the people uh, in, in order to actually define the problem, create quality interviews, um, extract all of this data and put this fact into your product. So basically most of the time we spend uh, on this process and it's understanding how to talk to people, how to extract this data. So um, as we really start to feel it, uh, start to feel the problem, start to feel the um, all the obstacles their audience face on everyday basis, um, they, we will able to become the, uh, the good products. It's my main advice because unfortunately it's the key problem. I mean, uh, they typically fail. I mean, it sounds very simple, but in most cases, even uh, organizations, projects, startups, which already have attraction, have some um, revenues, um, at some point they made very uh, quick research and they in, in after the pre-seed or seed stage after the first investment they start to invest more in growth 
uh, in funnel, which actually not correct in terms of a problem or in terms of the audience or in terms of a focus or key features they put into the uh, product. So I see how startups, even after pre-seed seed stage actually die. So which what we call um, uh, valley of death. I mean, until uh, everything is clear and, and completely certain, uh, never try to go uh, beyond your MVP and define everything uh, at first. So, uh, Yona, what do you mean by research? You said research, uh, certainly not the technology, but the needs, is that it? Understand yes. the needs? Uh, yes, yes. It's actual in-person meetings with uh, people you uh, create product for. Is uh, going to the hospitals, talking to doctors. I mean, for instance, I deal with the uh, startup building digital health uh, apps, and we never actually talk to the doctors uh, in person. I mean, um, currently it's actually pretty challenging, specifically under COVID-19, and that's why we're working on open source platforms uh, with the MRI scans or medical data, which uh, simplify the access to particular insights to, to better understand the problem, uh, to statistics uh, and uh, so social data. But uh, anyway, you should spend time in order to talk with people in person, record interviews. Typically, it's a uh, 15, uh, 15, 30 minutes uh, interviews, talks. Uh, learn how to extract these insights to put your in your product development sprints. And actually, uh, it's a foundation of successful products. Okay, well, I appreciate that. That's a very good answer. I like it. Thank you. Uh, I have Rudy? to agree with, uh, with Yona on, on that. On you know, In short, define a real problem because if you don't have a problem and that you're trying to solve, uh, technically, you don't have anything to work on. This is in short, but let me localize it more on the Lebanese uh, because I know there's many uh, Lebanese uh, university grads in here. And I just want to say and portray a message that uh, the first thing you do is don't, dis don't actually despair. And this is, you know, very crucial uh, advice because we, I understand where we are today. I understand the problems that we are facing. We have, uh, you know, uh, possibilities, opportunities they are lacking. Uh, I would say go and work and really impress, not just yourself, impress the community. Uh, try to really achieve something, you know, uh, that you can uh, produce to locally in Lebanon or uh, regionally or even uh, worldwide. And start with a real problem that we are facing in Lebanon. We have an advantage of the Arabic uh, language that we can scale towards the whole MENA region. So take that as an opportunity, you know, to be localized where versus uh, other, uh, you know, startups, they don't have such uh, advantages. Uh, try to work on, on a real problem where, and today Lebanon is facing many problems. If you wanna, you know, focus on Lebanon only, uh, try to really uh, find solutions. We have, you know, we're, we're somehow, we're, we have the capabilities, we have the resources. Uh, we try to work uh, with your colleagues. Uh, don't hide your ideas. This is very important. Spread the ideas, test it. The more you test it, the more you're going to get feedback. Don't worry about it being, you know, stalling or whatever. If you, a good idea hidden is, uh, you know, it will die anyway. Uh, on the contrary, uh, do spread it. Uh, try to really uh, fine tune it. I've worked with, uh, you know, more than 100 startup on different uh, areas in, 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 in the MENA. Uh, the major problem is that problem definition. Really go back to the roots, try to find out how you're going to solve it uh, using AI, using IoT, using you know digital transformation, anything that doesn't have to be related to those. Uh, but really try to, from the core, to work it and don't get despair. There's a lot of opportunities in Lebanon that are opening for you. Uh, this platform is one of them. There are really tens of platforms if you want. Uh, you know, uh, just the community and the media partners and the people that are working here, you know, everybody is connected to another one. Beirut AI is another one. Uh, you know, they have a lot of advancement. They have a lot of things that they are doing. Uh, unfortunately, today, universities in term in Lebanon, you know, they don't, uh, there's no major in AI. That's something that we must acknowledge. There is some uh, you know courses related to AI. There's I don't think there's any courses related to IoT. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think uh, this is what I know. 
hopefully the universities can you know try to adopt i was uh, last week with a university uh, when they tried to uh, bring this course into the university they were you know there was a lot of legal uh, with the ministry of education uh, a lot of things that prevented them from actually uh, implementing such advanced uh, curriculum in their in their university so hopefully we can solve such problems from university sides but meanwhile there's a lot of resources uh, a lot of initiatives towards ai and iot uh, make use of them take boot camps uh, challenge yourself and hopefully we can all grow together and majorly you will have a successful uh, idea Thank you very much, Rudy. Thank you, Yona. Um, uh, uh, how's the time, Sarah? Are we, uh, do we have to, uh, um, I mean, do we have time for questions from the audience? Yes, I guess we have uh, time for one question or two, depending on the length of uh, the answer. Uh, we still have okay. like around <laughs> 10 minutes. Okay, yes. so here we have a question from, uh, uh, Walid Faour. Walid, can you can you state it? I mean, we don't have to read all of this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's up. better to rephrase it because it's so many questions. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was lost in reading the, the question itself. Open your mic, please. 